everyone, computer science exam day tomorrow. So I'm coming at you with six common mistakes that students might make, and hopefully you can avoid some of them. So the first one here is I've got start off with a total of 35. I increment it by one, add one to it, and it's still printing as 35. So easily done. And what can happen is a student might just forget that once you increment the variable, you must assign the new value 36 back to the original variable. And uh, you do that by using a standard assignment. And now, as predicted, it's 36. So once again, number one is don't forget to assign your variables back once you increment them. Number two, common mistake when you're using an or uh, in an if statement is you might say something like if total is 55 or 89, makes sense, then print true, else print false. So I'd expect us to print false because my total is 100, but it's printing true. Why is it printing true? It's printing true because this is not treated as an evaluation against total. This is just an evaluation of 89 as a number, which actually always returns true unless it's zero. So we've just got to remember that when we're doing these and ors and etc., when we're using two evaluations, we have to put what we're evaluating it against on both sides or it will not work. This is a logic error, so you mightn't actually see or pick up that it's not working until later on in your code because it will compile, compile fine. Number three common mistake, we've all been there. Every student knows that lists index start with zero, but in an exam situation and you're thinking about other stuff, it's easy to forget. So you want the first item in the list and you put in cars one and it gives you the second item. No, 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 we must always remember that our lists start at zero and we need to offset every subsequent number. So it's a, a common one, but still it's made. Next one is our number four is our data types. So just remember, especially with Python, whenever we take an input, it gets stored as a string. And then if you try and do a bit of maths on it, it's going to give you this type error. So we must convert it to a number, an integer or a float perhaps. And then if we want to do the maths on it, it will work. Handy troubleshooting tip is that you can print the type of a variable by hitting print type. So in this case, I'm going to print the type of answer. And I know what this is going to be because I've just converted to an integer, but it tells me that its class is integer. So very useful for troubleshooting there sometimes if you're trying to work out why your variables aren't behaving as they should. Next is iterating lists. Just remember there are two methods of doing it. This is handy for printing out the content of lists for i in fruits, print i, or when you're just doing something straight to the list. If you're doing something a bit more complex where you need to get the index values though, you'll need to iterate the lists with this method where you for i in range, length of fruits. Now the difference is here, and it can, can, can confuse, is that in the first case, i is the actual value of the items as the list gets iterated. So if I print i here, it prints bananas, apples, oranges. In the second method, where you use the range zero to, in this case, the length of the list, and you print i, it's actually the index value zero, one, two. Now we can use that index value obviously to print the list using the standard list notation, but just be aware of the difference. So it sometimes can confuse students, but the two methods of list iteration, one where you might need to work with the index and one where you're not fussed about using the index numbers. Now, last but not least is a pretty basic one, but it's caught me a few times trying to run my code, nothing's happening. And just remember, did you call the function that you've made? And now I've called the function and it works. So number six is actually calling the function you've made. I hope this helps you and good luck with the exam tomorrow.